come join me for a knockout review of blood supply to the abdominal organs. For this video, we'll be looking at the three unpaired branches of the aorta. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video to answer some clinically related questions. For a review of venous drainage of the abdominal organs, click on the link above. Starting with the celiac trunk. For this, we'll be doing punches to represent the branches, as well as the branches of the branches, that all supply blood to the foregut organs. So into position. Now, the celiac trunk trifurcates into three arteries, two that are gonna head towards the left side and one that heads to the right side. I'm gonna be using the correct side of my body to represent these. However, you may choose to use the opposite side so that you better mirror myself as well as the image. Starting with the left gastric artery. For the left gastric, our punch will be in a superior direction followed by a downward hook. Why? Because that's the trajectory that the artery takes. It first moves in a superior direction and then does a hairpin turn to reach the lesser curvature of the stomach. So let's do it together. Left gastric, left gastric, left gastric, left gastric, left gastric. Now let's move on to the splenic artery. For this, we'll be doing a side punch to the left side, just like this. This helps to represent the trajectory that the splenic artery takes as it heads towards the spleen. Now keep in mind that the splenic artery runs along the superior portion of the pancreas as well as through the splenorenal ligament. So everybody, let's do that. Splenic artery, splenic artery, splenic artery, splenic artery. Now just before reaching the spleen, the splenic artery gives off a branch, which is the left gastroomental or gastroepiploic artery. This artery heads towards the greater curvature of the stomach on the left side. So what's our move look like? We're gonna do the horizontal side punch for splenic artery, followed by a downward hook punch. Warning, warning. Keep in mind these moves were not designed to help you win a fist fight please use only for their intended purpose, which is to represent the trajectory of the abdominal arteries. So, splenic artery, left gastromental. Splenic artery, left gastromental. Splenic artery, left gastromental. Splenic artery, left gastromental. That's it for the left side. Now moving on to the right side, which unfortunately is a bit more complicated. So our only branch of the celiac trunk that goes towards the right side is the common hepatic. We'll do a right side punch to represent the horizontal trajectory of this artery. It'll look like this. Common hepatic, common hepatic, common hepatic, common hepatic. Now the common hepatic gives off a branch known as the right gastric artery. Keep in mind, however, where this artery comes from is highly variable. In fact, in anatomy, we tend to not name arteries based on where they come from, but rather where the arteries go, because this is much more consistent. So where does the right gastric artery go? It heads towards the lesser curvature of the stomach on the right side. How do we represent that? With a Downward hook punch. Ready? Common hepatic, right gastric. Common hepatic, right gastric. Common hepatic, right gastric. Now it's important to realize that the right gastric is going to anastomose with the left gastric. Let's represent it. Left gastric, 
common hepatic, right gastric, anastomose. Left gastric, common hepatic, right gastric, anastomose. Left gastric, common hepatic, right gastric, anastomose. The common hepatic artery also gives off another branch known as the gastroduodenal artery. However, this too is variable. The gastroduodenal artery is going to travel in an inferior direction to supply the pylorus as well as the proximal part of the duodenum. In doing so, it travels posterior to the duodenum, which is an important relationship to understand because duodenal ulcers that erode through the posterior wall of the duodenum can compromise this artery. So what does our move look like? It's going to be a downward punch. Common hepatic, gastroduodenal. Common hepatic, gastroduodenal. Common hepatic, gastroduodenal. The gastroduodenal artery is going to bifurcate into two arteries. One, the superior pancreatic and duodenal artery, and two, the right gastroomental or gastroepicloic artery. We'll look at that one first. So the, the right gastroomental artery is going to travel to the greater curvature of the stomach on the right side. How do we represent this? With another hook punch. It'll look like this. Come and pat it. Gastroduodenal, gastroomental. Common hepatic, gastroduodenal, right gastroomental. Common hepatic, gastroduodenal, right gastroomental. It's important to realize that the right gastroomental is going to anastomose with the left gastroomental as well. What does that look like? Splenic, left gastroomental. Common hepatic, gastroduodenal, right gastroomental, anastomose. Splenic, left gastroomental, common hepatic, gastroduodenal, right gastroomental, anastomose. Wow, that was a mouthful. Moving on to the second branch of the gastroduodenal artery, which is the superior pancreatico duodenal artery. As the name suggests, it's going to be supplying blood to not only the duodenum, but also the pancreatic head. What do we do to represent this artery? We're going to make a C shape with our hand to represent its trajectory following the curvature of the duodenum. Let's do it. Common hepatic. Gastroduodenal, superior pancreatico duodenal. Common hepatic, gastroduodenal, superior pancreatico duodenal. Common hepatic, gastroduodenal, superior pancreatico duodenal. Another mouthful. Another branch off of the common hepatic artery is the proper hepatic artery. This artery travels in a superior direction and travels through a ligament known as the hepatoduodenal ligament. To represent this, we're going to punch in a superior direction. It'll look like this. Common hepatic, proper hepatic. Common hepatic, proper hepatic. Common hepatic, proper hepatic. Now the proper hepatic artery is going to divide into a right and a left hepatic branch. The right hepatic artery is going to give off a cystic artery which travels to the gallbladder. Keep in mind, however, that again, where the cystic artery stems from is highly variable, so you may actually see it coming off of the left hepatic or even the proper hepatic artery. So what does this look like? Common hepatic, proper hepatic, right and left hepatic, cystic artery. Common hepatic, proper hepatic, right and left hepatic, cystic artery. That's it for the celiac trunk, but that was a lot of information. So why don't you take the time now 
to pause the video and review on your own, making sure that you can do the moves, taking a drop of blood to the stomach, including both the greater as well as the lesser curvature of the stomach on both sides, the spleen, and the gallbladder. I'll meet you back when you're done. Welcome back. Moving down to the superior mesenteric artery. For this representation, we're going to get down into a plank position. I'm going to turn around though so that my body better matches the positioning of the arteries. The SMA supplies the organs of the midgut, which includes most of the duodenum, the jejunum, ilium, cecum, ascending colon, and most of the transverse colon. Into position. The first branch off the SMA is a small but mighty branch, the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. What does it supply? Not surprisingly, the duodenum as well as the pancreatic head. We'll make a C shape with our hand to demonstrate how the artery curves around the head of the pancreas. Why is it mighty? Because it forms an anastomosis with the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery, which is a subbranch from the celiac trunk. This has clinical relevance in that the anastomosis provides an alternative route of blood flow between the celiac trunk and SMA in the event of an obstruction. The next branch off the SMA is the middle colic. We'll stick our arm out like this to demonstrate it traveling to the transverse colon. Keep in mind, however, that the transverse colon is flipped up in this image. When in a more natural position, the middle colic actually travels in an inferior direction. Next, we have a million and one intestinal branches. Okay, maybe not really that many but they all fan off the SMA on their way to the jejunum and ilium. So fan your arms out like this. Then there's the iliocolic branch. Kick your leg out diagonally to represent its trajectory toward the ileocecal junction. As its name implies, it provides blood to the distal part of the ilium, the cecum, as well as the appendix. And lastly is the right colic. Kick your leg out to the side to represent the horizontal trajectory of the right colic to the descending colon. My heavens, that's hard. The right colic anastomoses with the middle colic via the marginal artery. In fact, the marginal artery serves as a continuous arterial circle around the colon, providing an anastomosis between branches of the SMA as well as the IMA. Now let's do the whole thing again as a review. Inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery, middle colic, intestinal arteries, iliocolic, right colic, Inferior pancreaticoduodenal, middle colic, intestinal arteries, iliocolic, right colic. Pause the video and do it five more times without me. Now moving inferiorly to the inferior mesenteric artery. We'll stand up again for this representation. Again, I'm going to be using my correct side, however you may choose to use the opposite side so that you can better mirror myself as well as the image. Starting with the first branch off of the IMA, that's going to be the left colic heading towards the descending colon. We'll use a side kick to the left side to represent this vessel. The left colic. The next branches are a series of sigmoidal branches. So what will we do? We will use a S kick to represent the sigmoidal branches to the sigmoid colon. And lastly, to follow it up, is our superior rectal vessel, which dives down into the pelvis to reach the rectum. For this, 
will just dip down to touch the floor. That's it for the IMA. Let's practice together one more time. Left colic, sigmoidal arteries, superior rectal. Left colic, sigmoidal arteries, superior rectal. Left colic, sigmoidal arteries, superior rectal. That's it. Now it's time for the quiz. That's it. Hope this video has helped you to knock out blood supply to the abdomen.